Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. You know, the, the I had Ian, uh, Ian O'Connor on, great author. He's wrote Belichick, Derek Jeter book, Captain, The Rise and Reign of Mike Krzyzewski. He's writing an Aaron Rodgers book, Out of the Darkness, which it comes out in September. I cannot wait to read that book. And I think the Jets, I think, first of all, I think Aaron's a very complex, fascinating pro athlete. Um, you know, some he's got he's got a little bit of the smartest guy in the room thing, but he's a smart guy. So that's who Aaron is. I've I've said this before, and I said it last year. I, I didn't pick him as a playoff team. Um they gotta they gotta be good early. Because that jet situation, when that Nicole Hardman came thing out, he said basically, yeah, I've been with the Chiefs and I've been with the Jets. You guys don't have to believe me, but I know what winning looks like and that ain't it. And that offense is just making shit up as they go with Aaron. I got to tell you, you can you don't have to be a great player to have great access. Like, I thought that was damning. By the way, you could tell it was because multiple Jets fired back at a guy who had one catch as a jet. What did you make of that? Well, I, I said this when the season ended. I, I, I am 100% not falling for them again. I, I, I will not pick them to make the playoffs. I, I don't even give a shit who they sign or draft. I'm not buying it. No chance. None. I, I think the Rodgers thing, uh, five plays or whatever it was, but if you've watched him for a long time, you could tell he wasn't quite as nope. quick. And you're telling me, and this is the thing with the Cousins. Cousins doesn't move outside of a two-yard radius. Rodgers' greatness and the reason you give a first-round pick for a guy 39 you're paying all this money to was all the ad-libbing and the movement stuff on top of the arm and the accuracy. That's gone. I'm betting against that. And then the other thing is the organizational. No one I know thinks Nathaniel Hackett's any good. And that's not even factoring in Rogers tells him everything to do. So you got this guy that is not some natural talent. You talk to people in the NFL and I, I do agree with this is most coaches on offense. If you just get a quarterback coach, no coverages and no schemes. There is like an innate ability to call plays. Some guys have it. Some guys do not. A lot of people have personalities. If you put a microphone in front of them, could they carry a show for an hour? Probably not. But some people would be able to just like Shane Steichen had it. Brian Johnson this year, the Eagles found out, does not right. have it. Both of them could get on a whiteboard and tell you different things, right? And you'd be like, ah, oh, this guy knows a lot of football. So Nathaniel Hackett is not viewed that way. Rodgers kind of is, but he's kind of like this LeBron James figure where he always gets his way. Well, you're not quite the same player. And then there are these weird dynamics in the organization. I mean, that athletic article coming out, people, whatever there is, that never happens to Andy Reid. Why? Because everyone respects everyone. A lot of organizations, when people don't respect each other, they start stabbing each other in the back. So well, it's like a White House. That, if there's a lot of leaks, it tells you everything you know about the president of the White House. It's chaotic. It, it's chaotic. And that, to me, was on full display. And in fairness to everyone in there, if you're leaking, you're like, this is all going down. So you're like, I'm going to get some stuff out there. That, and that's what's happening, because you realize right away, Aaron can't save us. And even if he was 100% healthy this year, do they make the playoffs? The O-line was terrible. Probably not. Well, their O-line's not going to be that much better. Their talent's not that great. I, I, I think they're headed for a complete implosion and a complete disaster. So, and a lot's going to have to do with a guy. We, we've seen it with these other older quarterbacks of his generation, Manning and Breeze. The moment they lost, and those guys weren't dependent on movement at all, but their arms just went, it was done. Rodgers' arm's still going to be solid. If he can't move, He's going to be much closer to the 15th overall guy than he is well, the 6th or 7th. Go, and then you got a problem because they're they're not good enough to overcome that. Go look that. at old quarterbacks. So Stafford had Whitworth, Andrew Whitworth. Stafford had a good O-line, older quarterback, won a Super Bowl with the Rams. Brady had a good O-line. They drafted, they were weak at right tackle. Tristan Wirfs won a Super Bowl. Russell and Denver with Peyton, decent O-line. Had a decent year. Rodgers, bad O-line, out in four snaps. O-lines are significantly more important to older quarterbacks. And that there's no question. By the way, 
Whitworth retires, Stafford gets hurt, and the wheels come off. Then last year, they shore, you know, they get Dotson from the Steelers, they draft another guard, they shore up their middle, they're good enough at center, and Stafford's good again. So I don't think you can say what you want. I mean, to me, an offensive line matters much less for a hyper athletic quarterback in the first three or four years. I mean, Kyler Murray made the playoffs running for his life. Russell Wilson never had, they had Tom Cable. Russell Wilson never had great O-lines in Seattle. In his prime, he got to two Super Bowls. The weakness was the offensive line. That Jets O-line, let's say they get the third best left tackle because about eight will get picked in this draft. That guy's, Andrew Thomas of the Giants is excellent. He wasn't ready to play as a rookie. The, these left tackles, none of these guys are great. Trent Williams, Tyron Smith was for the Cowboys. Outliers. Even successful left tackles scrap for you know, until Thanksgiving. The, the game is just so fast. These, I mean, the, the best athletes outside a wide receiver in this league are arguably Russians. So I, I just think they're going to get a left tackle. He'll be fine. Rest of the O-line is makeshift. Elijah Barra Tucker is never healthy. I think it's going to be a mess. And the other thing is that that city, you know, like Philly, is unlike anything else. And there is a massive bullseye on that organization with Aaron. And just with this operation now, these articles coming out, like everyone's paying attention. So all of a sudden, you're two and four. I mean, are we talking about Robert Sala? if they are under 500 throughout the season, getting fired in the middle of the season. That's very possible. All of a sudden, Gerard Mayo beats you on Halloween with some random quarterback and you fall to four and You're six. Done. Like, good luck. See you later. And, and, and Roger starts acting weird. Everyone starts pointing the fingers. That's what happens. No, it's York, interesting. Right? It's just, it's, it's just I, you can see it coming from a mile yeah. away. It's interesting. Team. So Brady had some wants when he went to Tampa. But what he wanted, he wanted Gronk, a winning player that still had juice in the tank. He wanted A.B., you know, a winning player who could make plays. Aaron befriends like Randall Cobb or an offensive lineman who's rotational or Nat Hackett. Like, I understand an older quarterback wanting to bring an ally. Like, I totally get it on that side of the ball. Coaches do yeah. it all the time. Just bring a guy that can play. It's like Aaron, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, and Nat Hackett. That, I mean, Brady came out and said, listen, I need my security blanket. Even Leonard Fournette, you know, Brady apparently just said, listen, he's a veteran. He's a little undervalued. He'll be fine. He's a grown-up. But they were, produ they were producing yes. in playoff games for the guy. The, the, all the guys Rodgers brought over, if they were good, could not have produced. They would have been you know, kick to the side for younger players. They weren't good enough to, if the team had, if he had been healthy to help them compete, that was clear when they were bad. So I, I'm with you. I mean, I, he, he likes these guys. Randall Cobb was a really yeah. good player 10 years ago, eight yeah. years ago. It's been a while. <laughs> so, and the other thing with Gronk, they already had break. He got to kind of rotate yes. in and out. And also help teach everyone else the yeah. offense with Tom and kind of his quirks. Yeah, it's just, in, it's interesting is, is Brady is always strategic. And it felt like Aaron wanted to be comfortable. Tom wanted to be great. You know, Tom's standard is Super Bowls. Tom still had that fire. Tom yeah. wanted to be great. You know, you wouldn't take Nat Hackett. Nobody, I don't think Aaron thinks he's great. I mean, you watched Aaron Rodgers' reaction multiple times this season because the camera was always on him when... Kept shaking his head. Constantly. So, like, Aaron's no dummy. He knows. So, it's like, I don't know. It, it, it's, you know, I'll say this about, like, LeBron James. You know, LeBron James, he wanted Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade and Kyrie and Kevin Love and Anthony Davis. You know, LeBron's got no loyalty if you can't play. <laughs> He's He'll bring his guys, yeah. but, you, you know, he'll bring clutch sports. He'll bring – so, you know, it, it. I think, you know, the great players – not only are they strategic, but you've got to you've got to elevate them. Like Aaron brought over guys that I don't know if he drinks, but like it sounds like they were like drinking buddies or like like poker buddies. It's like Aaron, this is you're going up against Buffalo Belichick. It's not good enough.